Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the third day of the Practical EdTech Creativity Conference. I'm Richard Byrne, and today's session, or the first session of the day today, is with Tony Vincent, who's going to be talking all about making your own icons. He's going to be showing you some really cool stuff that you can do with Google Drawings. Tony and I go way back, probably a decade or so. Maybe even longer than that, Tony. I'm not quite sure. But it's been a while. Tony and I have worked at the same conferences together, even did the did a workshop together in the past. Uh, so I'm really excited about this session. I'm planning to take notes. I'm in my classroom still, so I'm planning to take notes on my own notebook. Uh, and I hope you do the same as well. Please ask questions. There's a Q&A function there and go to webinar. Please take advantage of that and ask questions throughout the session. Uh, if Tony doesn't get to it right away, I'll make sure we get to them by the end of the session, by the time we are done today. Uh, and as I have been saying, if you miss something because you had to step away, maybe you're in your classroom still and you have to step away for a moment, don't worry. Everything's being recorded. All the recordings I'll be putting up on my YouTube channel as well as on Practical Ed Tech. And many of the presenters will also be putting them on their own uh, websites as well. So be on the lookout for that. So I'm going to turn it over to Tony here in just a moment. Just give me one minute to switch it over and we'll see Tony take over in just a moment here. And then I'll stop talking and let Tony run the show. So let's see there. Looking good. Now I may be unmuted. Let's see, webcam, turn all this stuff on. All right, good? Looks good, it's all you, Tony. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, Richard, thanks for offering this creativity conference. Uh, it, it's been great to see the sessions and I've missed some and it's good to know that they are archived. Um, for me, I don't really have very many slides for you today. So uh, you might want to screenshot some things that are there because there's just, there's just not a lot of my slides because it's going to be demos. I want to talk about uh, drawing your own icons. It's something I've been doing for years and I've been showing students how to do it and uh, showing teachers. And so I want to show you how to do it and then give you some reasons why you might want to do it. Uh, let's see if I go to full screen here. I'm assuming that my video and my screen are on at the same time. Hopefully. That's correct. Okay, yep. good. Thank you. <laughs> and Richard, chime in anytime, especially if you have a, a question. We can do it right, right as I'm talking here. So, uh, so my name is Tony Vincent. I live in Iowa. Uh, if you don't know, Iowa is in the middle of the United States. Uh, more specifically, I'm in Council Bluffs, Iowa, right next to Omaha. Um, this is the area that I grew up. I have twins that are in first grade. Uh, tonight is their music concert. They're very excited. I am too. Uh, I started teaching fifth grade in 1998 in Omaha. And uh, then I was my school's tech coach for a while. I worked as a consultant for 12 years. Uh, last school year, I went back into the classroom for a year and taught fifth grade again. And really, the same things I teach teachers, I ended up teaching my students, in particular, a lot of digital drawing skills. So uh, being able to make an icon, like you see on your screen now, the, uh, the of, of Iowa, my students could do that. And I'll show you, if you're not sure how, uh, in this webinar. So uh, yeah, I was teaching fifth grade. It was a great time. I'm, I just did it for a year. I'm back to um, consulting and I'll tell you about some of my offerings maybe at the end of the webinar. Uh, by the way, these two icons I've shown you are ones that I've drawn myself and I'll show you about those a little bit later. Uh, but let's start off. Why would you ever want to draw your own icons? Well, first of all, what is an icon? An icon is it's a graphic symbol that represents a person or an action or a thing. And they're usually really simple. Oftentimes they're just black and white or black and clear or one other color and transparent. Um, but they're immediately recognizable. It's like a universal language. 
oftentimes icons are also accompanied with words and they can really enhance your message grab attention and uh, i just think it's a really fun creative challenge uh, to make my own icons and icons can be made from shapes uh, just looking at this icon here you start taking it apart and when you start seeing things as shapes you realize i could make that so it is a creative challenge. Sometimes I have to abandon an icon that I think I'm making because I can't pull off what's in my head. But most of the time I can, I, I figure it out. So it's a, a great opportunity to practice uh, problem solving and perseverance. On my part, when I'm the creator and when my students were making icons and drawing, they would get frustrated and they'd have to overcome some obstacles to make what they had in their head like come alive. What I like, if I make my own icons, then I'm in charge of it. If I've drawn it with my own shapes, I can choose the colors. I can make it any color I'd like. I'm in control. In fact, I'm in so much control that I can customize these icons to be exactly what I want. A little bit later, I'll show you my class logo, which nothing like it exists anywhere because we made it ourselves. We made it from shapes. Uh, being able to, to customize really is, besides these other reasons, probably my big one is that there's, I can't find an icon that somebody else has made that is exactly what I want. So I make my own. And another big is you can resize without losing quality. If you've drawn from shapes, these are known as vector drawings. And what that means really is you can expand it and make it larger and you won't see pixels. It does not get pixelated when it's made large. And oftentimes icons are really simple that when you shrink them down, they look great too. They can look great at any size. And another reason is it just feels good to make your own creations. Um, I'm proud of the work I've done when I've made my own icons and certainly my students have felt that same way making their icons. So there's six reasons why you might wanna draw your own icons. There are definitely reasons why you would not want to draw your own icon. So I'll, I'll tell you about those too. The first thing is it can take a lot of time. I mean, I can probably draw just about anything with shapes if I put my mind to it and I have all day. <laughs> As busy teachers, you don't have all day. So uh, sometimes you just can't make it happen. So maybe you don't draw all your icons. Um, maybe you draw some. Uh, then, your work might look messy. Maybe you need more practice. Your, your work is not quite yet where you want it. And I know as teachers, we want our work to look professional. So as teachers, if we're making our own icons, they could look a little, a little messy. Students making their own icons, I think they look charming if they're a little messy. Uh, then maybe you don't find it enjoyable <laughs> uh it's not your thing to do the drawing and and that's perfectly okay too um you know i i know probably richard you might fall into this last category of maybe don't you wouldn't find it as enjoyable as doing other things um and it, richard your strong suit is is definitely writing and bringing things together and that is where my weakness is, is but but I would love to draw about it. That'd be fun. So Tony, let me interject for a second. I have said to people in the past, when we did our workshop together in Arizona, you could tell what I did and what Tony did by the font choices. <laughs> yeah, I put uh, way too much thought into those things, but it's what I'm into. <laughs> no, it's not way too much. I think you put more thought into it than I do. It's not too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there, I'm sure there's a happy medium somewhere. <laughs> now, now, I, I do have to admit that on this slide and the previous slide, I did not draw any of those icons because, well, I did it this morning. <laughs> and uh, so the time thing, and uh, I don't have to. There is a repository of millions of these icons that I can use any time. So it's a lot faster to type something in and find it. Like, I, though I, I do take a while to get the icon to look just right. I, I'm kind of proud of what I found for you don't find it enjoyable. Uh, I did a lot of searching into this website I'm about to show you, and I just couldn't find something that represented not being enjoyable. <laughs> so then I typed in pain 
And this was one of them, touching a cactus, right? You know, it's not enjoyable. So I thought that was a, a fun way to illustrate that. And I used the nounproject.com. Uh, this website has a repository of uh, several million icons contributed by different designers. You can use it for free. Um, if you do, they ask you and they actually imprint on what you download, the citation, the credit to the noun project and to the author. Um, but if you pay for it, then you get some extra options, including the ability to change the icon color and also the permission to not give credit. <laughs> you can actually use it without crediting. And that's why you didn't see credits on my previous slides because uh, as a Noun Pro member, uh, I, they're not imprinted on there and it's, it's, it's a benefit. It's, it's kind of how, how they make money is, is offering that. So you can look up anything here. It's just what I saw with pain and then you can see <laughs> good old cactus guy there. That's the one I, I, uh, I chose. Uh, so knowing that this is out there and you, the Noun Project has all these icons already made, if there's something that, that I already have, then there's not a big reason for me to recreate it. Uh, I will tell you that you can use it for free. The Noun Pro has a special education offer. If you go to the URL that you see up there, you can apply for the education discount. So instead of $40 a year for unlimited access to the Noun Project, um, the, their, uh, their paid offering for education is $20 a year. Um, and I think that's a great deal. When I first started using the Noun Project, I think they were priced at $90 a year. They brought their prices down um, over the years and they offer educators a, a really good deal. Um, but you can still use it without, uh, without paying for it. You can use it for free. So let's, let's do some drawings and you can see what's involved. I'll start with something simple. And I have an animation here showing you that there is this snowflake icon that I'll make for you. And it's made using just 20 black rectangles. That's it. It's kind of mesmerizing to, to watch when you pull apart an icon made with shapes and realize that, oh, that's all it is. So let's do that. I'm gonna do this all in Google Slides. I could do this in Google Drawings. I could do it in PowerPoint. I could do it in Keynote. Um, since I'm in Slides already, let's stick with Slides. So there's the Shapes menu that is right there and you have different categories of shapes. All I need is a rectangle. So I choose the rectangle shape and I'm gonna draw a tall rectangle, kind of tall and skinny. There, right, this is a basic shape. Uh, I can give it a fill. I'm gonna give it a black fill. I'm gonna keep my icons black and white, kind of like the noun, noun project for now. And then there is a border color and the border color is uh, right here and um, ignore my flashing lights, they will stop in a moment. <laughs> uh, the border color, I changed to transparent. Um, borders get a little weird when you uh, start resizing your images because the border thickness is in pixels. So I, I almost always use a transparent border. I don't want any borders in my icons because again, they kind of affect resizing. Now, just for fun, maybe I'll move this to the middle of my slide. There you go. I can tell by those alignment guides, they're there. And then I'm going to duplicate. This is probably the biggest uh, keyboard shortcut I use anywhere, designing slides, documents, is I duplicate. Um, I think one of the, the keys to making good looking icons is consistent sizing. Um, and one way to make sure things are consistent is instead of redrawing the same thing over and over again and having it be slightly different, is duplicate. So one way to duplicate is from the uh, edit menu and there's duplicate, or you can use control or command D and that's the keyboard shortcut I use all the time. So control or command, depending on if you're on a Mac or not, um, and D. So I've, I've got a duplicate and I'm just gonna shrink this down by dragging one of these blue boxes and then zoom in for you here. So it's, see it a little better. All right, so this circle up here is rotation and I can drag it and I can rotate it, 
kind of behind my mouse. I can see how many degrees uh, I've rotated it. If I hold down shift as I drag this, um, it rotates in 15 degree increments. So if I wanted, uh, say, 30 degrees here, I can just uh, let go right there at 30 degrees. And I'll kind of position it here. I can use, instead of just using my mouse, sometimes it's easier to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move this stuff around. So arrow keys once kind of make a big jump, but if I want to move something one pixel at a time, I hold down shift and press the, uh, the arrow keys, and that moves it one pixel at a time. So I like where that is. I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna just move it back on top of the original and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm going to rotate it the other direction and then I'll just kind of line it up here. And just to make sure they're lined up, that red line is telling me, um, the horizontal line that they're uh, lined up horizontally. I think that's I think that's pretty good. Looks like a chicken foot to me right now. Uh, if I hold down Shift and click, I can select multiple things at once. So I want my my two diagonals selected. So I held down Shift to select them, and I want them a little bit lower. Yeah, maybe like that. And if I drag them, I just make sure that red line is there, so I know that the two are centered with the larger rectangle. All right, so far so good. Does not look like a snowflake yet. So. <laughs> Uh, let me, uh, I'm going to hold down shift and click both of those. I'm going to duplicate and then I'm going to just take this circle and rotate and move them to the bottom. There we go. All right, maybe a little less. So like I said, consistency in your icons can really help them stand out. They, they look better when you have consistent sizing, centering. So uh, one thing I'll do is I'm going to hold down shift so that I've selected all four of these uh, rotated rectangles. I'll just drag them to make sure they are all centered. Okay, now everything's centered. That dictionary popping up. Everything is centered. So I know that that, that, that has uh, symmetry, alignment. It's going to be great. So now I just drag my mouse so that I've selected all five rectangles and I'm going to group them. So I go to arrange and group. Now it's time for a lot of duplicating and rotating. So I duplicate, I'm going to move it right back on top of the original and then I'm going to rotate it. How many degrees was that? 45? Yep. And then I duplicate this 45 degree one, place it on top of the original, and hold down shift because it makes it easier to land on rotating 90 degrees. I duplicate one more time, place it directly on top of the original, and rotate. All right, that dictionary needs to stop popping up. And there I have it. I have my snowflake. I usually like to select all the shapes in there and uh, group them. So under the arrange menu, I'll group. That way, if I copy or paste this into another project, they all come at once. And if they're grouped too, it makes it easier to uh, recolor them. So we did it. We made our first icon. <laughs> uh, I don't think, oh, I don't have my question panel open. That's why I don't see anything. Oh, and maybe there are no questions. But if you got some, you can ask. Um, I will say I can resize this icon. Uh, if I drag a corner, here's the risk that you take is a smushed snowflake. I'm going to undo that. So if you're resizing an icon that you've drawn, uh, hold down shift and drag a corner. If you do that, then uh, it will keep the same proportions. It won't get squished or stretched. And so here's something I learned from my friend Felix Giacomino. It has changed my life, so I'm about to change yours. 
uh, you know, you get something nice and centered, and then you realize that you want to resize it. So you drag a corner, but now it's not centered. And then I have to move it back and look for the alignment guides. And I've already centered it. it. It really stinks to resize something and then have to reposition it. I've been doing it wrong all these years. It, if this, I want this to be bigger, but I want it to stay centered. I'll hold down shift because I don't want it stretched or smushed, but I'll also hold down option on the, on the Mac, it's option on Windows and Chromebooks. It's either Alt or Windows key. It's one of those funky keys. You can try the keys on your keyboard and see which combination works. On my computer, it's option. And when I drag, look, it resizes it from the center. So it stays centered by holding down that option key. This has been such a life changer for me. It saved me lots of seconds that add up because I don't have to reposition holding down that key. All right, we've, we've made this icon. Let's look at another. Here is, oh, it's an adorable mitten. And this mitten is made just using eight shapes. Now, there's the rounded rectangle shape that we see for the thumb. It turns out that I use rounded rectangles in my icons all the time, probably, probably more than regular rectangles. Uh, and then there's another shape that's kind of funky that's the main part of the, the uh, mitten. Let's take a look. So got my blank here. That main part of the mitten is a shape that's along the top here where it's curved on the top two corners, but right angles on the bottom. If I hover over that, it's called the round same side corner rectangle. So I select it and then I can draw with it. All right, not too bad. Maybe I'll center it. Um, this is one of the shapes where I get to control some aspects of it. Maybe you can see this yellow diamond that's at the top. If I drag that diamond, I can change something about the shape. In this case, I can change the roundness. So there, now I have a shape that's round at the top and square at the bottom. I will say, like, I do a lot of design in Keynote, and Keynote doesn't have this shape as far as I know. So if I needed this in Keynote, I would draw a rectangle and a circle and have them overlap, and I would have the same, the same shape. Uh, but I'm going to fill this in with black and a transparent border. Now it's time to add the thumb as a rounded rectangle. And here's a key piece. This works in Google Slides. I don't think this next trick works in Keynote, and I'm not sure about PowerPoint, but it's definitely something I use a lot in slides and drawings. So I already have this object selected, and it has a black fill and a transparent border. The next shape I make, if I keep this selected, will have the same attributes. It will have a black fill and a transparent border, saving me time. So. With that selected, I go to the uh, rounded rectangle and I'll just draw one here. And aha, it has a transparent border and it's a black fill. Uh, I'm going to make this as round as possible. There we go. And let's uh, move this into place. And then an icon trick really that what happens here is that uh, a lot of shapes overlap. It's not like a uh, you know tangram puzzles where the shapes don't overlap, they all fit together. When you're making your own icons, you don't have to follow those tangram rules. You can have things overlap and that is no problem at all. In fact, most will have overlaps. All right, now for the elastic bottom. Let's, uh, let's select that so that the next rectangle I make will also have a black fill and transparent border. I'm going to zoom in for you. There we go. Whoops. Scrolled too far. There we go. Okay, I think that's a good size. So I'm going to duplicate with my keyboard shortcut of Command or Control and duplicate. And I'll just kind of drag. Another way to duplicate is you can hold down Option on, an, on a Mac. It might be Alt or the Windows key on your computer. If I hold down Option and drag, then it automatically duplicates. So that's another way I can do this. 
All right, I think I think that's enough. But doesn't that look awfully sloppy? Like things are not lined up right. So here's what I need to do. I am going to drag this first rectangle and align it. I can see the red line um, with the edge of that round, the same side, whatever shape is called, <laughs> the shape above it. And then this one, I am going to do the same thing. I am going to have that aligned on the side. See that red alignment guy, there it is. All right, so now this is a trick I use, not just for drawing icons, but anytime I'm doing documents, I, I want things to be nicely aligned. So I drag my mouse over to select all of it, and let's let's first do this. Let's align um, in the center. Ta-da! I didn't have to use my mouse and drag each one and look for alignment guides. It did it all on its own. So that was under Arrange, Align, and Center. Sometimes you might need to do it in the in the middle if things are going up and down. Now, under this Arrange menu, there is also uh, under a, uh, Distribute. So there's a Distribute, and this will evenly space out all the objects that are selected between the first and last one. So check this out. So Arrange, Distribute horizontally. Ta-da! So I have a perfectly spaced set of rectangles uh, that are all aligned. I'm just going to use my keyboard. Uh, to arrow keys to move those up and down. And then we can see we have our mitten. I'll select all and group. And let's see, a good color for a mitten. Black is fine, but oh, maybe uh, it's purple color. There we go. All right, should we do another one? Let's do a hat. Uh, here is a hat, and uh, this hat is made using 33 shapes. There is something called the pie shape. There's lots of white rectangles. There's a rounded rectangle as well, and then a cloud shape, all combined to make this hat. Uh, all right, so I go to shapes, and then to get uh, this half circle, it's a weird shape, and um, once you figure out that this shape is there, it can change a lot of things. It looks like Pac-Man. It's called the pie shape, but you can adjust the amount of the pie that is there. So I'm going to draw with that pie shape, so I select it, and then I'll just draw. And at first you think, well, that looks nothing like the hat shape that you want, Tony. You're right. I drag these yellow diamonds to make a half circle. If I can grab one, let's see. I've enlarged my mouse for this webinar. Let's zoom in. So <laughs> my large mouse makes things a little awkward for me today. I can grab it. I can do this. It needs to be a pointer, I believe. If not, I will figure out a different way to grab this, but I just need to grab that little yellow dot. In the meantime, I, I checked, uh, glanced over at Twitter. Uh, Matt Miller, hello, I'm glad you're here. Susan, I'm glad you're here too. Oh, there we go, I got it. Saying Susan's name, it was good luck. All right, so I grabbed that and now I have a half circle shape. Now the hat is a little bit taller than that, so I'm gonna just drag that up. It goes off my page, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, and then, oops, scrolling happens a lot in Google Slides for me. Uh, I'll just put this in the, kind of toward the middle of the slide. It does extend off the bottom in case I ever wanted to complete this oval, but it's not a big deal that it extends there. Like my other icons, let's give it a black fill and transparent border. Uh, we need a rounded rectangle. Oh, I'll show you this trick. This is one I use a lot too. Say I forget to select uh, the the first shape, and then I ended up drawing a 
rounded rectangle and like, oh, I want that to be the exact same color and fill. Um, what you can do is click your original shape and there's a tool that's sitting there that is probably underutilized. It's called the paint format tool. So um, with the first object selected, I click paint format and now the next thing that I click will be given the same styling, the same fill and the same border. So I'll click my rounded rectangle. Ta-da! Filling with black isn't a big deal, like that's pretty easy, but sometimes if you have some complicated styling, um, it's really nice to be able to apply that from one object, from one shape to another. So this hat, let's make the brim a little taller, there we go, has some white across the bottom. And this is going to be a very familiar process to you now. Kind of the elastic piece here is a white rectangle with a transparent border. I'll create one and I will duplicate a whole ton. I won't spend time trying to align them up yet because I have the arrange menu at my disposal that can help me space these out. So I, I just really do care about the first and last ones, the middle ones don't matter. I'll drag my mouse across them and if I do that my align and distribute won't work because I have more than just the white rectangles. I also have the rounded rectangle and the pie shape. So if this happens to you, uh, one way to deselect an object is to hold down shift and click it. So if I hold down shift and now I click that pie shape, it unselects it, it's deselected. And then I just need to deselect my rounded rectangle, leaving just my white rectangles. So now I'll go to Arrange, Align, and let's align them in the middle. Nice. Arrange and distribute horizontally. I'll just drag these to make sure they're centered. There we go. And the hat, and just select it all and move it down a little bit, is missing the little cotton on top. So uh, that shape, you know, there, there's, there are some interesting shapes here. There's a lightning bolt, there's a moon, a sun. Uh, there is a cloud shape, but that cloud shape turns out to be one that we could use for our hat. Oh, and it, I forgot to first click a black object, but no problem because I'll use the paint format tool and click. There's my hat. I can select all of it and group it. All right. And actually, this hat is not done. My original that I see here has that really cool crisscross pattern. So let's try that. Uh, that pattern is going to use white rectangles. Maybe a little taller or skinnier than the ones that are down there, or maybe shorter actually. And I'm going to put this at 40, a 45 degree angle after I zoom in. Right, there you go. Um, and it's going to go off the edge of the hat. And I know that might bother you, but as long as the background is white and this is white, it's not going to matter that it goes off the edge. If I ever change the background, I would just need to change this color to match the color fill of the rectangle. All right, so now I'll duplicate this and rotate it the other direction. All right, did I not rotate it far enough? <laughs> a disadvantage of making my mouse really big is that I can't see the uh, the degrees underneath. All right, that's fitting together better. So then I just use shift and my arrow keys to precisely line these up. And then that's actually surprisingly difficult. <laughs> uh, all right, there, now I don't, I can't tell there, it looks good, okay. And so I have two of these. Oh, Tony, you have, that is not right. There you go, 45. Yeah, I get these lined up just right, and then I can shift click to select both. I can move the duplicate over and use my arrow keys to fine tune their position. 
I'm off a little bit, but in the interest of time, I'll just move on. I can duplicate all of these. Go across, it looks like maybe I just need two more. So duplicate, move, and again, it's okay that it goes off the side. That's with it with an icon, and if your background is a solid color, it's no problem. All right, I'm gonna hold, actually, I'm gonna drag across here to get this whole design. I'll shift click the pie shape to deselect that. Let's move this more toward the middle. Maybe I'll duplicate to make a stripe or to make the pattern on top. All right, let's zoom out and see what that looks like. Aha, ta-da. All right. I think I think we can do one more. <laughs> um, I see a, a tweet from Charlie about using Google Slides. Google Drawings, they, they both have the same drawing tools, so you can do the same things in both. Um, yet, if you add drop shadows to these, they can, it gives it a uh, kind of a uh, design like it's made out of felt or, you know, some sort of material, which is um, kind of a design language that Google uses. So just, uh, Charlie, I'll show you this. If I have this selected, actually, Charlie doesn't need to see it. He'd like other people to see it, I bet. And I choose format options and add a drop shadow. It adds a different dimension to my icon. Now, the, the one problem with using drop shadows is that then you can kind of see the shapes that made it. In the case of this glove, let me if I move, let's ungroup this. In the case of the glove, uh, if I move that backward, that might look a little bit better. Um, unfortunately, at this point, Google Slides doesn't have a like merge shapes option. You can do that in PowerPoint, and you can do that in Keynote, but uh, slides and drawings, you can't merge the shapes into one. If I could, then I wouldn't have that line that you see right there. All right, so awesome. Drop shadows can play a role in these too. Well, here is a downhill skier. And you can see that he is made with just nine shapes, just nine shapes. Um, it's actually kind of hard to draw something at an angle originally. So I will draw him just not going downhill. <laughs> He's just a non-downhill skier. And then after I've got it all constructed, I'll select all and then rotate him. It, it, it's a lot easier. Right, I have a blank slide here to do that. And uh, so his ski is made with, oh, uh, let's start with the trapezoid. And with the trapezoid shape, I can move one of these diamonds and change the, the angle there. All right, good, a little bit longer than I want. Um, the front of the ski will have a, uh, a little swoop. Uh, and a shape that might work for that is, I would call it the macaroni shape. The Google, if I hover over it, calls it the block arc shape. Um, but if I draw with this, you can see why I call it the macaroni shape. But you can drag the yellow parts the yellow diamonds to adjust how much of that circle is actually there. And I think I just want a quarter of it. You can also drag those diamonds to adjust the thickness. So as I put it here, uh, I would like it to be like that. There is a, there's a gap because I made my trapezoid a little too much of an angle. There we go. And I find icons take a lot of fine tuning, which probably isn't the most fun to watch somebody do on a webinar. But <laughs> I think it's a little bit thicker. All right, that is not lining up exactly how I wanted, but I think it'll be good enough. Um, and notice I'm working now, instead of having everything filled in with black, I've kind of, uh, 
I'll just leave the shapes and maybe I'll fill everything with black at the end, um, just so you can see the shapes come together. And I'm just still driven a little bit nuts on how that it's not lining up the way I want. All right, close enough. <laughs> Uh, so now uh, I'm gonna drag these, move them down a little bit, maybe center them. There we go. Uh, the skier has a rounded rectangle leg. So let's draw that. Then uh, I need an oval. Add that oval. Um, I need another rounded rectangle. So oh, let's do that. And this one is kind of moving forward, so I can bring this at an angle. And I think I want it completely rounded. I can already tell my proportions are not going to be quite right, but again, I could sit in, work with it all day. So there, there he is. Maybe his body there. Um, let's add another rounded rectangle, and this can be an arm. And round it completely. And then the ski is made of two rectangles. There's the pole, or the ski pole, sorry. And let's do center it. Good. And then the head. Um, the head is a circle. You'll notice that actually this shape, while it looks like a circle, is called an oval. To make sure it is a true circle, hold down shift as you draw with the oval, and no matter how I move my mouse, it will stay a perfect circle instead of making an oval shape. So holding down shift. All right, I think you got all the, the shapes there. Like I said, my proportions aren't, I'm not exactly happy with it, but now that you can see the shapes, I'll select all. Let's give it a transparent border and a black fill. And those skis are so huge on him. <laughs> it's like he's going sledding. All right, so I can shrink that down a little bit. <laughs> and maybe that there. All right, I think that's better. Some, And then all at the end, I select and I can make them going downhill. I said, again, I can, it's a lot easier to edit things bef if you do it before you make everything at an angle. All right, so we've drawn some icons and in the process, I was able to share with you some of the keyboard shortcuts <laughs> and really the power of holding down shift, holding down shift. Um, so if we look at what I've drawn, in my introduction for fifth grade here, the words are actually word art. When I make icons, I like to use word art for that because the word art allows me to resize by dragging. And if I wanted to select all and resize this icon, um, I could do it and the words, I don't have to go back and change the font size. So that, that's, that's a benefit. Um, if I look here, there, this is uh, my little person. He's outlined so that he shows up um, in front of the whiteboard. If I ungroup him, I did a little trick here. Um, there is this version. Actually, I'll recreate it here. So if I have him like this, you won't be able to see him when he's deselected. So I duplicate him and then um, move him, move the duplicate right back on top. And this is the one time where I will use the, uh, the border. I'm gonna make the border white. I'll actually fill him in with white too. Um, but I use the border and I make the border 
pretty thick. Here's a 12. Now I'm going to move this white version behind. So um, I'm going to use Command or Control and the down arrow just to move them back. This, and you can see now it has that white outline effect. Now, if you're if you are sticking with your icons being black and white, you're going to have to have some outlines so that you can see objects on top of others. And it's, probably I want to make that a little thicker. So if I click, let's see if I got the right guy here. Yep, 16. Ooh, even we could even go thicker. We could go all the way. I this actually is not thick enough for me. Uh, 24 pixels, while it sounds like a lot, there's times where I wish it would go up higher, but that's what we're limited to uh, with uh, Google Slides and Google Drawings anyway. In Keynote, I can make it, a, I think I can go up to 100 pixels in thickness for borders. You could probably do that in PowerPoint too. How about my Iowa icon? Um, uh, my Iowa icon was actually, uh, I just brought in a map of Iowa and traced it. So instead of using you know, pre-made shapes, I made my own shape. Uh, I'll duplicate this and I'll show you what I mean. So I brought in the map and under format options, uh, I made it a little bit uh, transparent. So it originally is like this, I made it a little transparent so I can see my drawing on top. And then I use under the line tool, there's something called polyline. Uh, the polyline tool lets you draw any kind of polygon um, and I'll show you. So I click and it and it makes one point um, and every time I click it, it adds a vertex and it just connects the sides together. Now this is a really tricky tool to use. Um, I've had lots of practice. If you try it you'll probably be frustrated because if you click too close together it will think your shape is done. If you double click, so if you click too quickly, it will think your shape is done. <laughs> and so you end up having to redo this quite a bit. I find that zooming is probably one of the best things to do. Um, I'm gonna make a simplified version. The version that I had on the previous slide that I showed you, um, I kind of, I think I was a little too thorough in tracing Iowa. <laughs> so here, I'll just kind of get the general gist of the shape of the, shape of the state. It's along the Missouri River, it's very windy, and I don't want to take the time to make all those winds. Plus, I think it'll look better, more simplified. So when I click my very, very first uh, uh, vertex, so they call it an anchor, then it completes the shape. And now this shape can be uh, given a fill color like anything else. It can be given a transparent border, or if I want to give it a... Uh, say an orange border, a thick orange border, I can do that because it's a shape. I've drawn it myself and I can style it any way I'd like as well. All right, um, I see on Twitter, uh, Jim Olson asks, is there a flatten all for an icon is done to make all the shapes into one thing? Um, not really. The best you can do, you, know, you can group, um, is particularly in Google Drawings, you could then uh, make sure the, the background is transparent, but you can download it as a PNG and then bring it back in. So the problem with that is that it's no longer uh, really editable. It's just, um, it's just an image like anything else. Uh, so yeah, it's not a good way to flatten other than to turn it into a PNG. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Sorry to interject. Uh, we've got to wrap up here pretty quickly because the next person is starting at, in uh, about 10 minutes. But there All are right. a couple of questions that I think you probably didn't see pop up. Uh, there was a question about how to export these. So when yeah, you export so from Google Slides, it exports as a PNG or a JPEG. What are your options for exporting as a vector? Um, the or only... The only vector option that we have is downloading as an SVG. So then you have to work with SVG tools and there's not, that's tricky because then it's harder to import. Um, if you wanted this in PowerPoint, you can save it as a, as a PowerPoint um, and then it will be an editable, since it's made out of shapes, uh, it'll be editable there too. 
Uh, it, there was another question. You you've mentioned keynote a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Any? Do you have a preference? It, you know, I, I know a lot a lot of teachers don't have a choice, but if you are given a choice of doing this in Google Slides or giving or doing it in Keynote, do you have a preference? <laughs> That's a tricky one. I, I use both and um, what I like that Google Drawings and Google Slides has way more shapes. The shape menu, um, the simple shapes. Keynote has built in like objects already. Um, so, you know, if you want to use what they've already constructed, but Keynote doesn't have this variety of shapes. But Keynote also has a better tool for making your own shapes. Um, I just showed you the polyline tool. There's also the curve line tool, which does curves. The problem is you can't combine the two. You either have to have straight sides or curved sides in the shapes that you draw with those inside of Google Slides or Google Drawings. Keynote's pen tool lets you combine it. You can double click a vertice and decide if it's going to you know, have straight sides or curve. So if I, if I know that I want to really trace something and I, and I want it to be pretty accurate, I'll use Keynote. Okay, great. Um, so for folks who are interested in more of this, where can we, where can they go? Yeah. Um, well, one thing I just want to say, one custom icon that I did is I have this post I did and a presentation about printing on your own sticky notes. And there's surprisingly not an icon for printing on sticky notes. So I made one, you know, um, that's, that's the big advantage of being able to do this. If you looked in my classroom, you would find these icons that, uh, represent a lot of things that we did. And then our class icon, we were called the pixel pause and, um, we were able to make our own uh, logo, like an icon. But if you want to learn more about this, I have a, a new website I started up this school year called shapegrams.com. And there are three lessons there that you can just take and use for drawing, um, not just icons, but kind of making your own clip art from shapes. So a lot of the things I just had shown you are things that I teach students through the videos and the documents. Um, like here you could get the the uh, the ice cream one and the document looks like this. Uh, it has uh, the picture to recreate and then space to recreate it. But if you scroll over, there's a video of me showing certain things on how to do it and there are some design tips. And then on the other side, there's always an activity that relates to the picture. Um, I use these in my fifth grade room. They weren't quite as refined last year, but every week I gave my students one as a drawing challenge. And they just get harder and harder every, every time they step up in, in the numbers, and in my case, doing it weekly. But by the end of the school year, my students were able to take what was in their head, their ideas, and express it um, through shapes, through making their icons, through making different pictures. Um, in fact, uh, Shapegrams 13 are the four icons that I just showed you how to draw. There's a video uh, where students can watch that, and then there are some design tips, and then even, even extra information there. So uh, Shapegrams is shapegrams.com. The first three are free, and then if you want all 35, which they'll be 35 by the end of the school year, that's $35 for the year. So, but just check out the first three, um, you, sorry for my dings, those first three uh, students can learn a ton. And then I teach teachers with online workshops. I have classy creations coming up here in January where I will show you, we will work with vectors and I will show you how you can bring in any vector, any SVG that you find, some of the clip art, and it will be completely editable inside of Google Slides and Google Drawings. Um, and then we'll make uh, printable things, we'll make animated GIFs and comics. So that's pretty fun. I also have a video class and a graphics class coming up this summer. But my website's learninginhand.com. You can check out all that stuff. Right. So Richard, well, will you be drawing your own icons anytime soon? I might. You know, I, 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 might, I might take it on. Uh, so fun and Fun fact about uh, about my drawing, and by the way, yes, I have uh, gotten to my home office while the webinar was going on, thanks to the miracle of hotspots. <laughs> uh, so, fun fact about about how I plan things: I do a ton of freehand sketches. I read a book years ago. Uh, I've mentioned it all the time. It's in my bookshelf. Uh, it's Dan Rome's *The Back of the Napkin*, 
And so I use that a lot when I'm just trying to sketch out ideas for presentations or workshops. So I actually do that. I just don't think that mine are very pretty. So that's how that goes. But uh, yeah, so I, I will I will be trying. I will be trying again, Tony. Uh, so thanks so much. Uh, unfortunately, we've got to shut down this webinar to start up the next one. So if you are planning to be here for Art Spencer's uh, assistive technology session, unfortunately, I'm going to shut down, go to webinar, and start it right back up again. So you might get kicked out and then kicked back on. Uh, but thank you so much to Tony. Everybody check out learninginhand.com and Shapegrams. And follow Tony on, on Instagram. If, you, if you're an Instagrammer, there's always cool stuff on Instagram or Twitter or everywhere around the world. So. Thank you, Tony. All I right. Thanks. Thanks for, for, for joining us. This is fun. Some new fun ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Take care.